Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's look at leak code 35 search insert position. So we're given an array of distinct integers, just like this one down here, and a target value. In this example, the target value is five. And we want to know, does this five exist in this input array? If it does, if we found the target, then we return the index. In this case, the index was two, right? Zero, one, two. But there's gonna be some cases where we do not find the value. In that case, we're gonna return the index if we were to insert the value in order. Conveniently for us, the input is sorted. So in this example, two. Now two is not in this array but we know that in order it would go over here between the one and the three. So in that case, we would have a output array or a, a new array of one, two, three, five, six. Now the index, the indices of this are gonna be zero, one, two, three, four. So we're gonna return one because that's the index that we inserted our two at. And that's what they tell us in the example. Now your first thought might be, well, since the input is sorted and we're given a target value, then can't we just go left to right and just you know search the array starting at index one? Uh, is this equal to five? Nope. Is this equal to five? Nope. Is this equal to five? It is. So we return value two because that's the index. So this is actually easier than you'd expect, right? This is the easiest solution. It's not even a bad solution, it's O of N. We didn't need any extra memory. This is a pretty good solution. But my question is, can we do even better than this? Is it even possible to do better than linear time O of N? Is that possible? Well, the hint that they gave us is that this input is sorted. Can we use that to our advantage? Can we maybe do better? Can we get a solution that's log n? And the answer is yes. How are we gonna do it? Well, there's a standard algorithm uh, that's called binary search that you may have heard of. And I'm gonna show you how to code that up to get the most optimal solution for this problem. Now the reason we're doing binary search is we don't wanna have to go through every single value and potentially check it. So we're gonna do a slight shortcut. We're gonna use the fact that this is sorted to our advantage. Now binary search works like this. We get a left pointer and, and initialize it over here. So at index zero, we get a right pointer and initialize it over here. And that index is three. And now we need to compute the middle because we don't wanna to have to start from the left and then check every value. And we don't wanna to have to start from the right and check every value. So maybe we can start in the middle and then kind of expand outwardly and use some shortcuts to our advantage. So when we're computing the middle, we're just gonna take zero plus three and divide it by two and we're gonna get a one. So we can put our middle over here. And now let's check, is this middle value the target? Three is not equal to five. So we don't, this is not the value we're looking for, so we're done. So we have to update our pointers. But we know that five is greater than three. So where are we gonna search now? We need to move our middle pointer. Are we gonna move it over there or are we gonna move it over there? Since we wanna start searching to the right, we're gonna update our pointers and shift them to the right. So we can leave our right pointer where it is because we're looking for greater values, but this left pointer is gonna to have to change. We're gonna to have to shift it to the right. So now our left pointer is gonna be over here at index two. So now let's recompute our middle pointer, which is gonna be two plus three divided by two. 
So we're taking the averages of our left and right pointers, and that's gonna give us a two. So now our middle pointer is also gonna be at this position, at, pos at index two. And so we check, is this value now our target value that we're looking for? It turns out it is. So we found our solution, we can return index two. But so what happens if our target value doesn't actually exist in our input array? What if our target value is actually two? Let's see what happens in that case. Notice how we're still initializing our left pointer here, we're still initializing our right pointer here, and we're still gonna compute the middle the exact same way. So zero plus three over two is gonna be one. So we can put our middle pointer over here once again. Now let's check, is three equal to our target? Three is not equal to two. Our target two is actually less than three. So we didn't find our target. So we didn't find our target. But now the only question we have, but so now, since we know this is not our target, the only question we have is which way do we shift? Are we gonna start looking for our target over here? Well, these numbers are even bigger than three, so they're obviously gonna be even bigger than two. So we can instead start looking to the left. So since we're looking to the left, we don't have to update our left pointer. All we have to do is take our right pointer and then shift it towards the left. And since we don't have to check these values, I'm just gonna cross them out because we know they're too big. And now, we can have our right pointer over here at the same index as our left pointer. So now let's check. One, is this our target? It is not. So we didn't find our target. One is not the target either, and we crossed out every value. So two does not even exist in our input array. So what do we do now? Well, we don't actually need to find the value. We just need to know what index we would insert it at. So since two is greater than one, that means we have to start searching to the right. But we know that we already searched every value to the right, and we, like, we also have this arrow going to the left. So where's the, the result? From the picture, it's pretty easy to see that this is where we would insert our two. And we would want to shift our left pointer because we want to update our left boundary. So we would say left plus one is going to be our return value. So this is kind of a, a high level general overview of binary search, and I'm going to code this up. And remember that this algorithm is efficient, at least more efficient than O of n, it's log n. And the reason is, because remember when we crossed these two values out, we crossed them out without even checking them. We didn't have to check every value to know that these couldn't possibly be the result value. That's why this is much better than big O of n. If we had a really large input array, log n would be more efficient than O of n. And we're gonna initialize our left and right pointers just like we did in the visual explanation to zero, which is the leftmost, and length of our input array nums minus one, which is the rightmost value. And now we're gonna start doing our binary search. So we're going and while left is less than right. So while our left pointer hasn't crossed our right pointer, which makes sense, right? Left should be towards the left and right should be towards the right. And now we're gonna compute the middle pointer, do some fractions, so left plus right divided by two. In Python, you need the double slash. And now the first thing we can check is, did we instantly find our target? Did we get really lucky and maybe the first value that we checked was equal to our target is nums of middle index equal to the target. If it is, we know that we can return that middle index because that's what we're trying to do is just return the index. If that's not the case though, there's only two possibilities. 
One possibility is that our target is too big. It's much, it's greater than the middle value. In that case, we wanna start searching to the right. So we can update our left pointer and shift it towards the right. The last case is if target was less than nums of middle, or in other words, the else case. In that case, we would want to start searching towards the left because our target is small. So we wanna to go to the left where the small numbers exist. Now, the last thing is what if we never find our target? What are we gonna return in that case? I'm gonna return the left pointer just like we did in our visual explanation. Now, why is it the left? Why not right? Or why not even middle, right? Why are we returning the left? First, I'm gonna run the code to prove to you that it works, and then I'm gonna explain a couple of the edge cases to show you why. So you can see this time it was better than 97%. That's why we wanna do log n because it's the most efficient. But why are we returning the left pointer? Let me explain. So what if we had a target of one and an array with just one value two? Then we would have our left pointer here and we would have our right pointer here. But we would see that one is less than two. So we're gonna start searching to the left, meaning we're gonna take our right boundary and put it over here. But clearly, now our pointers don't make sense, right? Uh, left should not be to the right of right. So in this case, we're gonna stop. Our, our, uh, our code is gonna stop, right? Our loop is gonna stop. We're gonna return left, just like we wrote in our code. And left is equal to zero, right? That's the index that it's at. And that's exactly what we want to do because once we take this one and insert it, our, our new output array is going to be one, two. But what if our target was different? What if our target was three? Then once again, our left pointer is going to start here. Our right pointer is going to start here. But three is greater than two. So now we're going to start searching to the right, meaning we're going to take our left boundary and then move it over here. But now, once again, this doesn't make sense. The left is out of bounds and left is to the right of our right pointer. That doesn't make sense. Our loop is gonna stop executing. And what value are we gonna return? We're gonna return left just like we wrote in our code. And what is left? Left is equal to one. And that makes sense, doesn't it? Because three, if we're gonna insert it, we're gonna insert it over here. And the output array then is gonna be two, three. Our three is at index one, which is exactly the value that we returned. I hope this at least explains kind of the main ideas of it. Uh, let me know if you have any questions. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you soon.